Hey everyone, welcome back to our channel. Today I'm going to be showing you a problem that we've been having with our Hustler Super S and how we're going to resolve it. So the problem that we were having with the mower is that it would die whenever you engaged the PTO or moved the left steering lever. So it did die on us like this whenever we were mowing a property. Um, so thankfully we were able to just maneuver it onto the trailer using the right steering. So we brought it back. We couldn't figure out what the problem was. So we asked our grandpa to look at it with us. We all kind of looked at it and thought maybe it was the switch up here possibly that correlates with that. But that also would not completely explained the PTO. We decided that if it was that switch down there that we're just going to go ahead and take it to the dealer. That way we could get a quick fix. Maybe they'd have one in stock. Also, we would lessen our downtime with the mower. So we went ahead and dropped it off to our local Hustler dealer. When we dropped it off, the guy there did say that it was more than likely that switch um, so they were just going to keep it for a couple days and probably have to order the part. After not hearing back from him for a few days, we decided to call back, see what was kind of going on. Um, and whenever we talked to him, he said that more than likely the cause of this was one of the suspension springs. So I'll go ahead and show you that. There are some springs underneath, as you can see, one right there and one right here. Whenever he mentioned the springs, we knew what he was talking about already because we've replaced those a few times ourselves just from wear and tear of the springs. Um, those springs are entirely just suspension. If you look underneath this model of the Super S, there's no wires or bumpers underneath the standard plate. So as you can see under here, there's no bumpers. There's only the two springs. There's no electrical components of any sort. If you do look at the newer models, they got rid of those springs. They have a center spring underneath the platform, and then they put two tension springs with the little hooks on both ends, one right here and one right there. But this model is not like that. So the dealer told us that it was going to be $150 to replace one of those springs. <laughs> we didn't really like the idea of that price considering we could buy one of those springs ourselves for under $10. And we also already had three of them on hand in our toolbox. So we told them to go ahead and discontinue service with the mower that we would pick up the mower and try to resolve the issue ourselves. We also didn't think that the spring itself would fix the problem considering this is more of an electrical issue. They loaded the mower back up onto the trailer for us. We had to pay a $50 diagnostic fee for the diagnosis of the problem being the suspension spring. So here we are going to try to figure out the problem ourselves. So when we got back with the mower, we decided that we were going to take these bolts off and remove this cover just to see what kind of wires were behind it. So once you take the cover off, you can look right here. You'll find a safety switch with two wire connections. So we're going to go ahead and take that off and test to see if it is faulty or not. As you can see, this is what it's like. It has the little button that depresses. Have this little assortment of fuses that came with this little tester thing that lights up to tell you that the fuse is working or not. As you can see this fuse is good so it lights up. 
So you can see right here, it is not lighting up. So that's how we can tell that this sensor is faulty. I'm gonna go ahead and show you a way that we can bypass the safety switch completely just to see and verify that that is actually the problem. Now we do not recommend doing this just because this is a safety feature and you are essentially disabling it. This is just to bypass it for now until we are able to get the part in the mail. So these two wires need to complete a circuit. So what we're going to do is put this fuse in there, connect them, and see if that fixes the issue. I connected the fuse. Let's go ahead and turn it on, see if it works. As you can see, that was definitely the issue. We do have a safety switch ordered and it should be in the mail here shortly. I'm going to wrap up the fuse with some electrical tape. That way it is secure. That was a super easy way to diagnose the issue and bypass the safety switch for now. Hope you guys found this video informative and helpful. Maybe you're going through the same problem or you might have this occur in the future. So do keep that safety switch in mind. Thank you guys so much for watching and we'll catch you in the next one.